Welcome back to Big Bone. Taking a look at something a little different. Taking a, uh, a dive into the American Civil War with uh, great campaigns of the American Civil War. And I wanted to uh, kind of kick off things by uh, using uh, the Atlanta is ours module. And technically we're gonna play the campaign, but we're starting with scenario 15. That's 60 turns long. As with many things, a lot of these scenarios end a lot earlier. You don't need the 60 turns or the 130 turns for the campaign. Things kind of work themselves out differently than they do historically. But, and I'm also not sure when you're gonna see this relative to a live stream that I'm gonna conduct and, and sort of gather in some information from all you American Civil War experts. So on how this campaign came about in relation to Richmond and some other things that were going on prior to it. So um, my experience and exposure to the system is relatively limited. I've uh, played Battle in the Clouds or Battle Above the Clouds, uh, a couple of smaller scenarios. I ran, I think this portion, there's a one mapper, this portion of this scenario a few months back, uh, didn't really use any of the advanced rules, just used the basic rules. And that's where I thought it might be interesting to uh, focus this video on, on some of the advanced rules and the supply and how that may factor into the gameplay, given the, uh, some of the, the awkwardness of some of those advanced rules. And, we, and, and here is where the you know, the knowledge base and the uh, Civil War law is not in, distilled or instilled in me uh, very, very well or very clearly. So I'm looking at some of these rules going, well, why? <laughs> why? But like with like most uh, Civil War games, <clears throat> when you see, you read about a given battle or a given campaign, in any level of even the high level detail, like the Battle of Gettysburg, I've toured that battlefield a couple of times and had different uh, guides tell me different things about the battle. And it would be almost impossible to build a really accurate game on Gettysburg if you wanted it to be somewhat accurate, right? I mean, because the just the crazy stuff that happened. Right? Yeah. So this is no exception is my point about that. So let's have a let's have a chat about the advanced rules. I'm going to keep the camera back because I've already had the cat attack <clears throat> this setup once, and I don't want to knock the camera over. So I seem to be doing that a lot lately. So uh, let's have a look. So there's a, a random events phase, which I think is pretty standard in the advanced games for this system. Um, you, obviously, your reinforcements. There's an off map map. <laughs> a set of rules and supply rules for that, I will not be using that. After reading the historical notes on it, it seems like it was provide, provided purely for fidelity and to see if you can uh, struggle to do better than history uh, because not a whole lot happened that was effective or that impacted the campaign. So, <clears throat> so we're not going to be doing the, the off-map business. Uh, leader transfers is pretty standard stuff. Uh, ca uh, county control phase. This ha actually happens twice during a turn. Uh, once here and then in the strategic cycle over on the right-hand side here, uh, you check that again. Uh, and really all that means is how do you determine if you control a, a county? And you do that by having four strength points in it, one of which must be cavalry, one of which must be in the capital of the area. So that would be, for instance, over here, Lafayette, here in hex 0422, would be controlled by these guys because I have three, six factors, but no calf. Oh yeah, there's calf, right? So that would uh, be counted as under control of uh, the Union forces now. And, and uh, there would be victory points accumulated. <clears throat> and here's one thing that I thought that would have been nice 
for this game uh, that come in the box, for in fact, probably for all these titles, you basically need to build a spreadsheet that keeps track of all these VPs that in the scenario book, there's a huge list of VPs. You know, you get one every turn for this county and two every turn for that county. And you kill this many steps, you get points and you uh, demoralize this, you get points. And so there's a whole bunch of stuff. So there's a lot of extra work you really got to do if you want to keep track of VPs. Uh, I don't see a track anywhere where I can keep that noted somehow unless it's in the box and I haven't seen it. So that to me was the first thing was like, oh, okay, I've got to do some crafting here and build a spreadsheet. So I may or may not do that. We might just uh, fuddle it, uh, uh, muddle our way through this and just play and, and not really worry too much about VPs. Okay, and the action cycle is interesting because uh, these initiative things that occur, these die rolls, if the double ones uh, is bad for the union and it's, it can potentially force the end of a cycle, but it can also force cohesion checks, which it, when I look all this, all this up, a cohesion check ends up being for every division or brigade that is not within three hexes of a rail line and wherever that rail head is, you need to be behind it, but within three hexes of that, and within eight and or within eight hexes of Sherman. And he starts up uh, here somewhere. Uh, so, <clears throat> so for instance, if we, if we did a cohesion check right now, all of these guys would be out of cohesion because they are more than three hexes away from the railhead, which I, <laughs> I just realized I haven't put on the map yet. And it's, it's gonna be up here somewhere. Uh, off screen to the left and they're obviously significantly further away from Sherman is that Sherman over there nope that's Palmer where is yeah here he is Sherman's here uh, just at a screen just right there um, we should put him on the map since we're going to have to track him so so that's that's a thing uh, in these uh, these action phases that can uh, mess up the the activity of the uh, union forces. And, and when you are out of cohesion, there all sorts of restrictions apply. So you lose a movement point for infantry. You can't conduct assaults unless you're uh, stacked with or within range of a leader. That leader, let's see, that leader needs to be in range of, basically be in, in range of Sherman. Uh, so it gets uh, it gets messy quickly. Um, <clears throat> lots of little little gotchas in this, and there's also some weather stuff that factors in that makes some makes some adjustments to this uh, cycle as well. Let's see, recovery uh, strategic cycle happens every four turns basically, and uh, that's when we start looking at uh, accumulating VPs again, doing any off map stuff. And then the supply segment. Now, supply segment is interesting because there are no supply rules in the great campaigns of the American Civil War in the basic game, and, uh, and there are, but there are in other games apparently. And I have I've got all of them, but I haven't played very many of them, as I just mentioned. And so, basically, it feels like OCS to me. Uh, we we have depots. So there's a depot somewhere here that has twenty ammo points or food points in it. And we need to be either adjacent to it or within 15 hexes of it. Uh, and it has to have some wagons in it, which it does there. And those wagons will sort of do this cycle of feeding your brigades and your divisions. And uh, this depot needs to, can be moved and, and you create new ones and it's got to be on rail lines and all that sort of fun stuff. Or it can be anywhere if you use wagons. So there's a lot of if and ors and buts around all of the, the advanced supply rules. And it's a little hairy, uh, just the wording's dense and it's a little complex, but the net seems to be Basically, be within 15 hexes or uh, do a little daisy chain action uh, with, with, I think, 
with, uh, and I just read this stuff, so bear with me if I'm wrong, uh, within 15 hexes, which should pretty much cover everybody, not these guys, right? Uh, but, uh, but then you can also uh, use wagons and uh, they, can, uh, they can be, they can th basically throw supply five hexes. Uh, so I'm probably bastardizing that set of little rules and stuff pretty aggressively. I'm not going to sit here and read you the specific rules and all that sort of stuff, but it, it, uh, it let's say it's just not super clean anyway. I, I think it probably, maybe that's just the way it is with ACW stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, so uh, there's that. Uh, supply. The Union Command segment. Now, here's another thing, which is basically just a, a design mechanism to hinder the Union, because I imagine with this massive army, this massive set of forces against this very small force here, that it would really not be difficult to just haul off and just kick some ass and have this thing over and done with in about six turns. Uh, so uh, Sherman had a lot of hindrances, apparently, and this, uh, this ability to be active or passive, once again, uh, sort of fact, factors into, uh, it's gonna impact, you do these cohesion tests and you, uh, you, it's gonna impact supply and attacking and all this sort of stuff. And if you're wanting to uh, be active, then you have to expend command points. And those command points, which I don't have on the map yet, they start with six, I believe. I've got a little marker here somewhere for it. Uh, but uh, it starts with six factors and it costs two. There's a, there's a rack of uh, die roll modifiers that go on forever. Let me see if I can find it real quick. You know, it's the higher your, your, your end result, the worse your situation is when it comes to doing these uh, strategic uh, this command stuff and I'm just trying to find the table here because I want to go this I do want to go through uh, there's a good 20 pages of extra rules here uh, so it's it's built a lot of a lot of chromey stuff on here activating an army that's not it oh no, I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it quick enough let me yeah here we go <clears throat> okay so basically you have uh, uh, when when you have two points or more, you're able to declare this active uh, notion, which you need to be active basically to do anything effectively. So you get, uh, but you'll get plus two for every uh, infantry division out of supply or demoralized. And you'll also get plus two for every union brigade or every each three union brigades or regiments uh, that are demoralized or out of supply. And the wording here is a little odd. It says, uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means. It says, note, no modifier is applied for one or two brigades or regiments. Does that mean strength points? Or does that just mean that if I'm doing these in clusters of three, that if there's odd ones out, they don't count. I think that's what it means. Now, plus four of each three Union brigades or regiments that are not within eight hexes of Sherman uh, and we use the same sort of rule as we do for the cohesion check there. So that's a bummer. But uh, if you're in within three hexes of a railroad, that's okay. And that's in supply and it's, uh, you know, inclusive of the railhead marker, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for every two turns, the current turn is passed four turns passive. Round it up. Oh, geez. Uh, it's something, something, May 21st, and then the current turn, blah, blah, blah. Here's a modifier. You work out the difference in the number of turns. You add that to the to the situation. So it gets hairy. There's a bunch of math. It's all good. You're counting turns by the looks of it. Uh, and then after rolling the dice, if the Union player has enough command points to clear an active uh, posture, he may do so. And then I think you're uh, then you're active for the next four turns until you come up for this strategic cycle again. So you can see the blue columns there uh, show you where the uh, strategic turns are. We'll see. I nearly tried that camera. Nearly tipped over. This phone is not uh, in the rack very well. It's going to be equally balanced or tips. Uh, so th 
stuff. You've got to keep track of stuff, and it's all in the rules. It's all in big, heavy, paragraphy things. And it wouldn't be cool to just have this in a table and with points and just stick that uh, stick that in there and make that happen, right? Just make make my life easy. Uh, I'm trying to think what else was interesting here that looks a little complicated. Uh, I talked about counter control, the random events, you know, depending on the weather, because the weather played a big factor in this. Uh, if it's in the rainy, rainy times, rainy section of the game turns, then you use a different random events table. I thought that was cute. Um, there's all these uh, detachment and attachment bits that you can do and Depend, yeah, there's railroad movement, which is fine. Uh, the, there's one, two, three, four, three and a half pages of rules about supply. And then there's bridge repairing, I saw that. And then there's also, you know, so if you're gonna use the off-map rules, uh, off-map chart, then the supply rules are completely different again. Uh, so we won't be doing that. Uh, Damage, you can obviously do raids on the railroads and stuff like that. There are Confederate forts and other bits and pieces. Uh, there's some special rules around pontoon bridges and uh, specific dudes, Steedman, uh, Rousseau, uh, there's Confederate forts, which are specific, but that's okay. And then, uh, oh, that, so that's that. And then, uh, so there's a bunch of that sort of stuff. And then there's all of the scenario specific rules, which go f into further detail for the first one, the first turn, turn one to three, then turn one through four. There are different rules about crossing rivers and being able to do that or repair bridges or not or lay down pontoons, which you can't do until turn, until turn six. So it's kind of meaty, it gets in there. Uh, I'm interested in doing some maneuver and seeing what is gonna happen here. And I think I'll be popping up a video again shortly. Let's have a look at the terrain. Let's have a look at what the choices might be uh, for both sides in terms of their defense and, and what they have going for them at the moment. You know, uh, here's the, you know, there's the two force task force uh, charts over there, and this is the basic layout. But let's uh, let's restart a, a video and let's have a look at uh, what some of the defensive options are, because it's a long way to Atlanta, right? All the way down, right there. Uh, so we're curious to see how these guys, uh, how the Union will manage that, and how uh, the Confederates will work out how to slow them down. Let's look forward to getting into this. We'll talk to you guys soon.